Hey, this is Dr. Barry. Welcome to my YouTube channel. I've been in the ketogenic diet um, circle for a while now, and I keep hearing people who are very afraid of ketosis leading to ketoacidosis. So today, I'm sick and tired of hearing that, basically, okay? That's, that's a ridiculous thing to say. If you're in any way, if you're a doctor, if you're a nurse, if you are any kind of medical professional or diabetic uh, counselor or nutritionist or dietitian, you should know better than to say this. To even say that nutritional ketosis could lead to ketoacidosis is ridiculous. And I'm going to explain to you why today. Now, if this sounds like something you'd like to hear about now and in the future, please click the subscribe button and click the little bell right beside it so that every time I have a bright idea, you'll be one of the very first people to know about it. Okay. Now, let's talk about the distinct and unequivocal differences between ketosis and ketoacidosis. Let's cover ketoacidosis first and get that out of the way because I'm sick and tired of hearing about it, honestly. I'm sick of people worrying about it. And if you're if you're not in the medical profession, then I can't blame you for worrying about this. I mean, keto, keto, that sounds kind of the same, right? I'm going to tell you a story in a little bit that really illustrates the, the silliness of thinking just because they sort of rhyme means that there's somehow one could lead to the other, okay? So let's talk about ketoacidosis. Now, when I was training as a medical student and as a resident, I took care of multiple people in the ICU intensive care unit with ketoacidosis. Every single one I ever saw in my career, everyone I've seen so far, was a diabetic, was a type 1 diabetic, and either they didn't know they were a type 1 diabetic, and therefore they weren't using any insulin at all, and their blood sugar went super high, their body was couldn't use the blood sugar because it couldn't get it into the, the organ cells, and so their, bo their body thought it was starving to death, and so it would start to break down fat and produce tons of ketones in their blood, and they would come in it's very, very sick, okay? They usually show up in the emergency room, and they usually go quickly after they're stabilized to the intensive care unit. I can remember in uh, Le Bonheur Children's Hospital in Memphis when I was training, I would take care of a little boy who didn't know he was a diabetic, and so obviously he would eat what little boys eat. His mom bought him the sweet cakes that he loved, and so his blood sugar was, I think when he came in, it was five or 600. He had no insulin because his pancreas had effectively stopped making any insulin. His blood was very acidic, and he was unconscious. I mean, he was almost dead. And if we hadn't intervened, he would have died. End of story, okay? That's the picture of ketoacidosis. Now, it is theoretically possible to have ketoacidosis if you're not a diabetic, but I've yet to see that happen. And I've read a couple of case studies online researching for this video where uh, the expert tried to pretend like a, ket a, ket a ketogenic diet led to ketoacidosis. But then when you really start reading into the, their numbers, you always find out the patient had a blood sugar over 200, which makes them by definition diabetic. So we're right back to I have yet to see a patient on paper or in person in ketoacidosis who was not a diabetic. And although I understand it's theoretically possible, I think that it is exceedingly rare, at least in my experience it is. So the key diagnostic criteria that you need to know about ketoacidosis is that your blood sugar is super high, right? Over 200, I've never seen one under 200 who would fit the definition of ketoacidosis. Next is super, super low sub-therapeutic insulin levels, usually zero their pancreas has stopped making insulin. Another way this can happen to type 1 diabetics is if they run out of insulin and think, well, it's fine. It's Friday. I'll wait till Monday to go to the pharmacy to get my insulin. And then they eat some carbs and then that's it. So type 1 diabetics have to be very, very careful because they will slip into ketoacidosis if they're eating carbs and if their insulin level is too low. The other thing that is, that's pathognomonic of ketoacidosis is low pH. That's the acidosis part, right? And so you come in with a, with a low pH. If your pH gets too low, you're done. You're, you sign out, you're gone to heaven, okay? So those are the main criteria. And it's almost always a diabetic usually a type 1 diabetic, and they usually have either they are, are a newly discovered diabetic or they have some terrible infection, which is really messing up their body chemistry, or they've had a severe trauma, right? That can also cause this as well. So 
ketones in their blood is an indication that they are in ketoacidosis. But really, the main criteria are the high glucose, the low insulin. And by low insulin, I don't mean the low insulin we're trying to get to with ketosis. I'm talking about zero. And then they have acidic blood, which is very, very unhealthy. The ketones are just something that, that happens, oh, by the way, in ketoacidosis. The ketones don't cause ketoacidosis at all, not even a little bit. They are not the cause of that. They're just uh, something we use as a sign to say, oh, gosh, look at all the ketones. We better check a uh, blood gas to see if they're acidic or not, because they may be in ketoacidosis. Now, ketosis. It's completely different. And let me tell you a story. Let me let me tell you a, a fable, a parable. If one of my daughters brought home a guy and said, hey, dad, I met this great guy. I really like him. I think we're going to date. And I'm like, oh, OK, cool. That's that's cool. What's his name? And she says, Jeffrey. And I go, what? Jeffrey? No, ma'am. No, ma'am. You get him out of my house right now and you call the cops. And she's like, what? Do you know him? I mean, what did he do something? What? What? I'm like, honey, his name's Jeffrey. Duh. And she's like, I, I still don't understand. Why is that bad? I'm like, he's got the same first name as Jeffrey Dahmer. You silly. He's a serial killer. Get him out of this house. Now, you can immediately see that's ridiculous, right? Well, he has the first name Jeffrey, so then he must be a serial killer, just like Jeffrey Dahmer. That's ridiculous logic, right? That's silly. So for somebody who's a learned expert about this sort of thing, if they pretend that ketosis is in any way, if nutritional ketosis is in any way related to ketoacidosis or that nutritional ketosis can lead to ketoacidosis, you need to hit the little unsubscribe button, the little unfollow button, the little whatever button, because they do not know what they have talked are talking about. They just reveal themselves as a sophomoric pundit who thinks they know and who likes to pretend they know, but who don't really know, okay, because they're unrelated at all. And nutritional ketosis, and for everybody in the ketogenic community, please don't just say ketosis, call it nutritional ketosis. I think that'll make everyone much more comfortable that we're not talking about the other Jeffrey, right, the Jeffrey Dahmer. We're talking about the nice Jeffrey, okay? So nutritional Ketosis, nutritional uh, ketosis is characterized by a low normal blood sugar, not a super high blood sugar like ketoacidosis. It's also characterized by a low normal insulin level, not zero or super low like in ketoacidosis, but low normal. That's where you want to be. That's where the, the health benefits start to kick in. And if you check somebody who's in very, very good nutritional ketosis. If you do an ABG, an arterial blood gas, which hurts, by the way, so I wouldn't recommend it, but their, their blood pH is going to be normal because they're not sick. It's not bad. It's good, okay? They're, they cause this not with infection or trauma or being a type 1 diabetic, but they caused it with their diet, right? Their nutrition. It's nutritional ketosis, so it's very, very different. And at the very worst, you might have some minor symptoms for a week or two with nutritional ketosis. Nothing like the intensive care unit symptoms you're going to have with ketoacidosis. OK, now I hope that this has cleared this up and I, I, I fully give you permission. If you hear someone pretend to say that nutritional ketosis could lead to ketoacidosis or could be dangerous like that, unfollow, unsubscribe, unfriend. They do not know what they're talking about, okay? So if you enjoyed this and you and you know people who are scared of ketoacidosis, who are like, I would do that keto diet, but I don't want to go to ketoacidosis. I don't want to die. Please share this video with them on your social media. Please share this so that people understand that just because this guy's name is Jeffrey does not mean he's a serial killer, okay? If you really enjoy the stuff I do on YouTube and Facebook, I have a link to my Patreon page down below. Please go there and give me a buck or two. It helps me have more time away from the clinic so that I can make more informational videos for you so that you know which Jeffrey to be afraid of, okay? This is Dr. Barry, and I'll see you next time.